It's time for the sandbox news. The new September dev blog came out this week. There's new cloud models, reworked post-processing, new glass, and more. In the dev blog, we can see the render API has been reworked. There's new render hooks. Previously, I think post-processing was only applied once during the main game rendering, but now you can hook into it on scene panels, tool cameras, icon rendering, and it's called multiple times in the pipeline. This allows us to do more advanced things. For example, now in the character customization screen, there's a lot of film grain, and when you change an outfit piece, the whole character will phase in and out in a glitchy glitch blur. There's a new glow outline effect. Now, previously the glow was busted and then it was updated, but it was also busted and then it was just removed. And now we have a new updated glow. You can actually customize it. In this clip, it flashes a bunch of different colors and when it's behind a wall, it's a solid black outline. This new glow is a fully customizable C-sharp system instead of being a weird behind the scenes mystery system. We've seen the faster shader compiling, the new editor notifications, there are new scene cameras. Looks like this is an improved system over what we had previously. So now we can more easily create these animated camera scenes. The glass has been reworked. For the next couple of weeks, all the glass in maps are just going to be missing textures until people update their maps with the new glass shader. This new glass is a lot more advanced. It's casting nice shadows. Now, I'm not sure if the old glass did that, but we can see it here. Here's a clip of it just being moved around. So we can see the reflections looking different at different angles. And in this clip, it looks like they're adjusting the parameters in real time and changing the refract values on the glass. Here are the new fancy leaderboards. So we've seen this previously. It allows us to create more complex leaderboards instead of games only being allowed to have one number for their leaderboard. There's improved cinematic effects. So depth of field and other screen effects. Here's the new depth of field. Now. To be completely honest, the depth of field has been changed so many different times, I'm not entirely sure how it's different, but it's been reworked again. We can change the color. We've been able to do this previously in the tab menu. Looks like there is no reset button, so I don't know how you're supposed to reset your colors if you messed it up. We can adjust uh, Vigan Yeti, Film Green, and Motion Blur, all in this tab menu now. There's a new model doc morph editor. This allows you to edit model morphs inside of model doc. This is very useful for making face poses and adding them to an animation graph. Previously, if we wanted to have different facial expressions, we would have to make them inside of a different program and import them into CNBox as a standalone animation. But now we can actually adjust the animations in model doc itself. There's also AnimGraph direct playback. So from my understanding, this allows you to blend in different animations into the current animations that are already playing. Previously, I think you had to disable the animations that were already playing and manually override them with an animation. Now, I don't know if that had any smoothing going on, but we can see this new system is a lot more convenient. There's new cloud assets. Now, this is a big one. This is a new asset store style system for Sandbox. Now in the asset browser, there's an asset.party tab. And inside it, there's a big list of all the assets that have been uploaded to the Sandbox website. So this is kind of like the Steam Workshop for an asset store. And you can actually use these cloud models inside of Hammer. What you do is you go to view and open up the experimental test asset browser. Now this is a separate asset browser from the existing asset browser. In the future, these will probably get merged However, this new asset browser is not ready for Hammer yet. Inside of it, we can see the big list of all the cloud assets. And if we take one out, we can drag it into Hammer and we can use it in our map. Currently, there's a lot of stolen assets in here. I imagine those will get removed. So use this at your own risk. Otherwise, you might end up with errors in your map one day when the stolen assets get removed. When you first drag an asset in, it'll appear as a little yellow cube as it's loading in and then it'll appear as a bigger cube and then the actual model will be in your map. Wow. This is a fully set up model with collisions and everything. Here I've added my realistic zombies. So this guy is very scary. If you wanted to, you could have a realistic zombie in your map and you can do anything you can with a regular model with it. You can fizz sim it. You can turn it into a physics prop. That's really crazy. 
Now, keep in mind, these are just models. So for example, this large health kit isn't a large health kit. It's just a model of a large health kit. And it looks like it's not loading in. Oh. There it goes, that's kind of weird. It looks like there are still some bugs with this new system, but it seems to be working for the most part. Who knows, maybe this model is just broken. With this new asset store cloud asset system, we also got a fix to the entity tool. So previously, if you wanted to use entities from a sandbox game, you'd have to do a weird hack where you had to actually load up into it in sandbox first to get all the assets loaded, and then you could spawn the entities in Hammer. But now if I was to just click on TTT, it will automatically download all of the assets for TTT. Now, that actually took a really long time to download, and it actually didn't download, it actually crashed sandbox. So it looks like there are still some issues to work out. But when it does work, when you place an entity down from a game like NPC Zombie Horde or TTT, you'll actually see the models of the entity instead of it being an error like it was before. Also, apparently you can click and drag models from a web browser onto here. Oh, that works. That's really cool. There's a lot of new clothes and character skins. Now we've already seen all of these, except for the new police officer uniform. So there's a new police hat. Oh, it looks like it's a crown that says police now. Previously, the hat actually said SB, which I believe stood for Space Build, an old Gary's Mod game mode. Space Build is kind of a weird reference, so it looks like they've just made it a crown now. There's also a new white button t-shirt. Now, it looks like the character decided to cover up the shirt, so we can't see it properly, but here it is. This is part of the British police uniform. I'm not British, but I think most of the British police wear this white shirt with a tie. Well, that's it. That's all the dev blog and that's all the video. Goodbye.